I am welcoming you, all our speakers, all our attendees, for attending this amazing event that is focusing on prioritizing PCOS. So everyone, welcome. PCOS Challenge has worked with Congressman David Scott and 20 others in the House of Representatives to introduce House Resolution 495, which is designating September as PCOS Awareness Month and also recognizing the seriousness of polycystic ovary syndrome. What I'd like to do today is to present a resolution from the Georgia House of Representatives. The PCOS Symposium is one of the most important events you can attend every year if you're a patient because you're going to learn all of the latest research and developments on the condition. And if you're a practitioner, you're going to learn and connect with really good researchers and amazing doctors who will be able to connect you more to what they're doing in the community. The research changes uh, very, very rapidly. Um, every day, different studies are being released that affect PCOS. So when we come to a conference like this, we can get on top of all the latest developments and share information. So as we understand how PCOS uh, presents itself uh, in different parts of the world, we begin to understand what the effects of the environment are. For example, we're studying uh, women, uh, West African women in Ghana. So that's very important to the public health of Ghana itself. But it's also going to be important for understanding the African-American experience in the United States. Many of the African-American women here obviously have ancestors from West Africa. So how does the environment in the United States, has a, how has that affected PCOS? It's really important for me to increase education or to get the word out about polycystic ovary syndrome because so many women are undiagnosed. Many women with polycystic struggle with fertility at that stage of their life when they want to build a family. And I, you know, I, so I'm here to kind of outline what all the treatment options are and lifestyle change options that can help people conceive um, when they want to conceive. One of the problems I see is that women are very busy. We're running around constantly. We have a lot on our plate, and it's hard to find a way to actually get a healthy diet and make it work. So I'm going to give some tips on how to plan, how to make your kitchen a PCOS-friendly kitchen, get problem foods out of the kitchen, stock it up with healthy foods, and then when you are on the run, to plan and bring snacks, what are some healthy meals you can get out on the run, just so you'll be prepared for when your crazy day starts. When I was about eight years old, my mother was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and I thought it was the worst thing ever. I thought she was dying. And I stand here for her, uh, as well as myself and so many other women in my family who never heard of the words polycystic ovary syndrome. When women feel power to share their story, they start sharing their story more, and the word gets out about PCOS, so there's more awareness. But then they also get empowered. Like all these women in this room, we're all in this together. And when empowered women work together, they get stuff done. We're part of Omega Phi Alpha. Uh, we're a national service sorority. We've had a lot of sisters, both currently who are active and also who have graduated who have struggled with PCOS. So it's a great place to put our money and our effort and our time to help an organization that will help our girls as well as other girls around the country. No matter where you are, in the United States, outside of the United States, you join us in 2018 and speak up and advocate for yourself and others with PCOS.